It's your show, you said the agenda. Once again, an eventful week on the continent. Quite frankly, my colleague Paul Cisco and many of us here at Straight Talk Africa would prefer a less eventful, more peaceful time of it one of these days. But we are not holding our breath. The African Union suspended Guinea-Bissau's membership on Tuesday after a coup last week by the nation's military leadership. AU Commissioner for Peace and Security, Ram Tame Lamamra, saying the council decides in conformity with the relevant AU instruments to suspend with immediate effect the participation of Guinea-Bissau in all activities of the African Union until the effective restoration of constitutional order. With additional sanctions to follow, what a mess for West Africa. Just as ECOWAS, the economic community of West African states, brokers a shaky return to civilian rule with coup leaders in Mali, there's a military coup here in Guinea-Bissau. Raimundo Perea, sworn in as interim president after the assassination of President João Bernardo Vieira in 2009, has been detained by military leaders. So too, former Prime Minister Carlos Gomez Jr., the leading candidate in a presidential runoff scheduled for April 19th. His opponent is Kumba Yala. Yala, now the military's favorite, was ousted as president in a 2003 coup. Junta spokesman Nase Perea and Gomez, whose whereabouts are secret, will be held until a new government is formed. Political analyst Yoro Dia. In normal country, the state has its army. But in Guinea, it seems that the army owns the state. That's why you have the military beyond the law and beyond the politician, and even if beyond the president of the republic. Guinea-Bissau has a long history of coups and assassinations. It relies heavily on foreign aid, has become one of the world's poorest countries, and is a transit point for drug trafficking to Europe. In East Africa, Rapidly escalating violence along the border between Sudan and South Sudan, as some saying the nations are at war. At the center of the fight is the disputed oil town of Hegli, claimed by both republics. The African Union and United Nations are calling for an immediate end to hostilities there. The Democratic Republic of Congo's President Joseph Kabila in a turnaround said DRC authorities will arrest General Bosco Ntinganda. He's been wanted by the International Criminal Court for war crimes since 2006. Ntinganda was once considered important to maintaining a fragile peace between Congolese army factions, but that is apparently no longer so. Former rebel leader Thomas Lubanga, accused with Ntinganda in the ICC case, last month became the first person to be found guilty by the International Court. In still other news, prominent U.S. physician Jim Yong Kim is the World Bank's new president. Nominated by President Barack Obama, the South Korean-born Kim has limited experience in the financial sector, but is praised for his work in health care and once headed United Nations efforts to fight AIDS. Finally, Zimbabwe is today celebrating 32 years of hard-won independence. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, on behalf of President Obama and the people of the United States, pledged to continue to be a partner and friend to all those who strive for a better future for Zimbabwe. Paul Sisko, VOA News.